Good morning. I'm glad that you're here this morning with smiles on your face and a song in your heart, I hope, anyway. Uh, we welcome you here this morning and are glad that you have come and joined us uh, in worshiping uh, our Father. Uh, just a few announcements just to kind of draw attention to if you have your bulletin. You can look at the Saskatoon Blades Faith. It says Faith Night, but it's actually Faith Afternoon because the, the game takes place on Sunday, February 11th. Um, don't be sorry. It's okay. It says Faith Night. Um, anyway, there's uh, special events and there's uh, pricing, uh, special pricing for tickets and stuff. And so if your family would like to take, that, take part in that, would be wonderful. Uh, probably a nice outing to have as a family. The other thing I want to focus on is a midweek Bible study that will be starting January 26th at 7.30. It's a first meeting just to try to have an introductory um, understanding about where people would like to go. So just focus on that. The other, oh, there's another retreat or a summit that's going to happen. So there was one here this past weekend un called Understanding Islam. And um, there was about 30 people, 20 to 30 people that came from various churches as well as our body of believers. And and joined in. But there is another one around refugees and displaced people, and it's done by the Salvation Army, International Social Justice Commission. So um, there are six 90-minute sessions uh, over two days, the 29th and 30th of January. The information is there if you're interested. Also, um, it is being done f live, so you can do it in your home if you want or um, join in. And then another, just there's a officer's retreat, a divisional officer's retreat that's happening on January 25th, or 22nd to 25th. Keep our officers um, in your prayers and the ministries that happen at Saskatoon and the officers that are doing that work, as well as those around our division as we work to serve the Lord in many different ways, um, in v many different venues, that uh, we would really be bringing the love of Jesus to those areas where people are hurt and, uh, and need to hear about the love of Jesus. So as we're here for a time of worship, let us uh, quiet our hearts and uh, have our call to worship this morning. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 115, as it bears the words of the song we're going to open up with this morning. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory. For the sake of your steadfast love, that is, said love and your faithfulness, why should the nation say, where is their God? But we will bless the Lord from this time and forevermore. Praise the Lord. So may we stand this morning and praise the God whom we put before idols.
Maybe seated if you want. <laughs>
down out in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Father, we know that you reign on high. May we acknowledge that this day, that you are indeed Hosanna in the highest. In your name, amen. Amen. Indeed, what a blessing it is to have a God who saves us and who compels us to reach out into a needy world. Our scripture this morning comes from Mark chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 21 through to 25. This is a familiar passage, I imagine, to many of you. And it begins, He said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed, and not on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given you. For to those who have, more will be given. And from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. May God bless the reading of his word, and may it inspire each of us this morning. We're going to continue in worship, and I believe the band is going to assist with... No, Carrie is going to assist with accompaniment. Uh, it is a songbook song. Uh, how deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure may you feel that you are god's treasure this morning how do
So while the band comes forward, uh, we are, uh, it's, it's a very interesting thing that people can come into the house of the Lord with complaints on their heart. Has anybody ever had that experience? You can be honest, it's okay. I, I've done that. I've complained, you got complaints on your heart, yeah. Uh, and uh, so, you know what? Complaints, be, you know what they get? What, you know what they beget? More complaints. In fact, you get one complaint going and then, oh, well, I didn't complain about that. And then, so I wonder what the opposite of complaining is. Well, it's being grateful. That's a different thing, hey? How many people are grateful for something this morning? Just raise your hand if you're grateful. Yeah. How many people are grateful to God for something this morning? So you know what being grateful begets? It begets being more grateful. So I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to reach to God and be grateful to something to Him personally. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to do that, and then I'm going to take up the offerings. But it's important to be grateful, so let's do that. So, Lord God, we are so grateful for your Son. We are so grateful that we are loved. We are so grateful that we can give to you our hearts, our minds, our soul, and our money. Lord, help this money that we are giving today to be used to create gratefulness in others. In Christ's name I ask this. Amen. Thank you. You could bow your heads, please. Lord, I would like to thank you for everyone here today and that we can come to you as a congregation, as part of your family. I thank you that you've made this possible. Today, we thank you for the leaders in this world that have given their lives to spreading your word. We especially ask for prayer for Colonels Lee and Deborah Graves as they lead all participa participants attending the Prairie Officer Retreat. We pray for safe travel, spiritual enrichment, and rest so they are refreshed, open and ready for the plans you have for them, their families, and the people they will touch. We also think of the many families and individuals struggling with debt and its effects. In this day when it's easier than ever to feel overwhelmed, stressed, and even desperate because of money, 
I pray that we will learn and understand that we will not find our happiness in things, but only in you, Lord. I ask for peace of heart for those in these situations, that they will know that they can turn to you not to fill their banks, but for hope, faith, direction, and strength while these times are tough. I pray we would trust in you, Lord. We also pray for our core family, Brian, Lindsay, and Miller Thiessen. God, I thank you for their family and the friendly and willing spirits you have given both Lindsay and Brian. You know the burdens of their day, Lord, and I just pray that they will feel your peace and know that you are prayed for, or they are prayed for. Bless Miller and all that he is doing. May he feel your strength as he faces the challenges of a young man. I pray that you would continue putting the people in his path that will encourage and guide him as he continues through high school. I pray he will trust in you, Lord. And I thank you for our sister, Jean Winters. God, I just pray that you would continue blessing Jean with good health. I thank you for the mentor and support that she is to our core family and our community, for the faithful servant heart she has shown and the prayer warrior she is. God, I thank you for the friendship Jean shares with so many and the encouragement she has given to me. Please continue to bless Jean and her family. We ask these things in your name, Lord, and thank you for your love. So you know how, what? Oh no, it works. Oh, what? We should watch the. No, 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 no. What's really fun though is to torture him with the fact that I'm holding his Nerf gun, but he's not supposed to be touching it. No. We're gonna, we're gonna. Who do I? Who could we trust this? Who could we trust you with? Yeah, I think the interesting one is Deb Spengler writes fan. Uh, uh. Jackson, can you make fun of me? Who could we give this one to? Oh, no, I don't trust you with anything. Um, <laughs> I know full well. No, 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 don't, don't shoot it. Don't shoot it. Don't shoot it. So I want you three, you three, you three over here. Jackson, right here. Right here, Jackson. Right here. No, no, don't shoot me. No, you're not. You're just going to stand there and hold it, okay? You're going to stand here, and you're over here. Okay, so now you three, you three all have, we don't need to use it. Don't, 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 don't shoot anybody. We don't need that. It was suggested that we get the Gatling gun when we start shooting the congregation, but I think that would go really, really, really bad. Um, so who's at a disadvantage here? Out of the three of these three, who's at a disadvantage? Why? Nothing. <laughs> See, look at that. I don't even have to continue with the. I don't even have to continue here. Um, so Lori's going to talk a little bit about light. So I was like, well, what 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 should we talk about about light? Uh, Isaiah forty two. So Isaiah forty two takes place after all of the uh, Jewish people from Israel have all been taken off and taken captive. Um, they're a little bit like you unarmed, kind of at a disadvantage because there's these two guys with guns, right? I mean, what happens with two guys with Nerf guns and a guy with no Nerf gun? You get shot, exactly. So let's let's not air con let's not do that. Let's um, so Isaiah 42 takes place after they've all take, been take, carried off and they're sort of at a disadvantage like you on the floor now. Come on, stand back up. You've got to be right in the middle of the object of so here's my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Now, can you picture, are you going to be able to bring forth justice without a, without a Nerf gun? Again, you give, keep giving the right answer. This is good. And he will bring forth justice to the nation. He will not cry out or lift up his voice. <laughs> this might not have been a good idea, but... Don't bring the bullet back. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I think that's what she was trying to do. <laughs> so you got Lori. You tried to shoot the wall. I'm sure that's how that was going. So who, who's got the advantage here? Not you. You don't have the Nerf gun. You. Well, really... In this story, 
they're talking about this light that will be a light to all the nations, and he won't break any reeds and stuff like that because he uses peace and justice to do it. Now, who's he talking about? Well, come on. The Sunday school answer is... <sighs> okay, put the guns down. Put the guns down. <laughs> Ayrton, take the guns and take them far, far away. I thought I could control it, but that just didn't work. <laughs> All right. Sit everybody out. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Everybody sit down. Thank you. All right. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have sent a light amongst us. We thank you that that light brings peace and that that light does not break reeds, does not raise their voice, but is the servant who suffers for us. It is the suffering servant that saves us and that brings us true justice, brings us true peace that we can feel inside of us. Lord, may you bring peace and justice to these folks. May they not turn to strength to rule, but turn to you, Lord, and let you rule within them. Thank you, Lord, for all the good gifts that come from above, including the suffering servant, Jesus Christ, the light of the nations. Amen. I can compete with that. <laughs> I, I didn't bring any Nerf guns today, although I did bring a few props, and my husband played right into my hand, unlike the kids playing into his. <laughs> um, and he asked me as soon as he sat down, what's under there? Anybody else wondered that this morning? A, a few? Okay, good. I'm going to leave you in wonder just for a little bit longer, okay? Awesome. Uh, we look uh, again to a few more parables um, from Mark's gospel. Uh, last week, uh, Lieutenant Dusty talked about the parable of either spreading seeds or of soil, depending on what scholar you speak to. And he challenged us to allow ourselves to be cultivated and to be the kind of soil that is receptive to God's word and God's teaching and God's spirit. And so today, we continue uh, in Mark chapter 4 with a few more parables. The parable of the light and the bushel basket. And so I have, everyone asked me this morning when I was getting this if it was a hat. It, it isn't actually a hat. It's an old offering plate that was in my closet, but it works perfect for the demonstration that I have this morning. But I have a light, and I turned it on to bring some kind of visual aid. Now, if we turned off all the lights, it would glow much brighter. But if I cover it, does it glow? Right. It does glow, but it glows hidden. Our passage uh, this morning talks about why we would bring a light in and then cover it up. And the explanation in the following verse, in verse 22, is that for there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. And so while the light does indeed shine under the plate, it is hidden. Now, I want to flip to Psalm 119 to another familiar verse, 105. Anybody know it by heart? Psalm 119, verse 105. I'll start you out, and then you'll be able... Oh. Light has been my peace, lamp has been my path. 
right. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And so that particular verse likens the light to God, right? To his truth, to his knowledge, to his understanding. And so if we liken that same symbol in the passage that we're reading today, and the author actually helps us because in Matthew it says, you don't put a light under a bushel basket. In our passage, it says you don't bring it in, or it is not brought in. Uh, in RSV, it translates, you don't have a light come in, and then put it under a bushel basket. Now, those verbs are actually quite important, because it personifies the light. If we personify the light in good Christian character, who is the light? That's right. The light is Jesus. So if Jesus is to come or to be brought into our community, are we going to hide him? Or are we going to put him on a lampstand? where he can be visible to others. But there's also a timing piece, because there is a time when Jesus seems to be hidden from the world. But all that is hidden will be disclosed, Mark tells us. And so I think it's only fair that all that is hidden be disclosed. Wow, hey? You guys are just gasping at how thrilling this is, aren't you? A, a large bag of rice, open and with a clip, and one Tupperware, two Tupperware, three Tupperware. I know, I know. It's thrilling, isn't it? I keep such incredibly uh, riveting secrets from you all. Riveting. Um, but we continue through our text uh, to verse 23. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given to you. Anyone who has ears, all I should see every hand up. <laughs> if I can point to your ears, you should raise your hand. And we can point <laughs> to everyone's ears. We all have ears. So we all must listen. We must hear. And there's something also really tricky about the verbiage here. Right? Right? Because having ears doesn't always necessitate that you will hear. Because it requires what? A response. That's right, right? You need to listen to hear. And often, if you're like me and you're hard of hearing, right? <laughs> Dusty is not going to uh, make me culpable, but I struggle with hearing already at, uh, at my age. And I often have to say, what? Pardon? <laughs> because I really have to listen carefully in order to hear. But that investment is worth it. When Jesus is speaking, he says, Followers, you have been given the tools, so hear, invest, listen. And then it starts talking about to the measure. So if you went to the market in Jesus' day, you would take with you what? Any guesses? A shekel? A basket? Anything else? 
Uh huh. Something to exchange. What, if you were getting grain, would you just put it loose in a basket that you've woven? Hmm? You would? What happens when you walk home and it starts falling on the ground? Will you be able to make flour when you get back? They did. They brought jugs for oil or for grain offerings and stuff. They had things that they kept, and they brought their containers in their baskets to carry with them. So I now need three volunteers. Who's brave for me this morning? All right. Come on, Ayrton. Randy, I need one more. Who's brave? All right, Laura, thank you. All right. Perfect. I have one for you. you. One for you. And one for you. All right. We're at the market. That's right. I'm turning the church into a market. And they're coming to buy my grain. So I take his container. Oh, can't get the lid on like that. There you are. Oh. I don't really want to clean up this confetti later, but let's try and get the lid on really good. (laughs) There you are. Thank you. And there we are. All customers at my grain market, did they all get the same thing? They did, but they got it in accordance to the measure that they brought. Ayrton brought a small measure, and so he got a small amount of grain. Laura brought the largest measure and probably has enough there to feed her family for supper. Randy... Because your house has shrunk over the years, you probably have enough there to feed you and joy also, right? Uh, with all your kids at home. But if Matt and Steph are coming for supper, no. I'm not so sure. <laughs> um, but he also got an allotment of grain according to his measure. Thank you, friends. You can leave them here if you like, or if you really need grain for supper, have at it. <laughs> um, But the exercise is the same with how we come to God. How we respond to him. Do we come prepared to receive only a few pieces of what he has to offer? Do we come prepared to receive uh, enough? Or do we come prepared to receive an abundance from him. We could say that the light was the kingdom of God represented. That the kingdom didn't come to be hidden. That we're not to keep secret this great salvation that we have, but that the kingdom came to be on a lampstand. And that's often when this text gets partnered with the text about being the city on a hill, right? To shine. We have experienced whether a little measure, a medium measure, or a large measure. We have received the knowledge of God through his word. And this text is calling us to respond. The final verse in verse 25 for today is, For to those who have, more will be given. And from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. 
have of what? You see, grace is an interesting thing. It is that which we don't deserve. Right? I believe that that text is something about investment. Now, somebody was talking this week, and I'm not going to single them out just because that's not fair. Um, But they were talking about a protected principal investment. Bankers, I know there's two of you. (laughs) That is, correct me if I'm wrong, when you put an investment in and what you invest is protected, but you still have the potential to earn. Is that correct? So if I invest in Nerf guns, (laughs) because they're a hot seller, right? If I invest in that, that if it was a PPI, a protected principal investment, what I invested would always be there, even at the end of the term of my investment. I wouldn't have the opportunity to lose. But I might have the opportunity to gain. This is kind of how I feel about this text. That if I choose to invest in the kingdom of God, in believing, in following, that I'm always going to have something and a potential for it to be more than what I've invested. But if I don't invest at all, I'll have nothing in the end. Because the only thing that'll be good is Nerf dollars. (laughs) Right? And I think that that's powerful when we as Christians look at our daily life and how we nurture ourselves. Dusty told us to prepare our hearts, to be able to be soft so that the seeds can plant in us and actually grow, right? But how? And so today our text is the how. We need to allow Jesus to come and be visible, the kingdom of God to be visible. We need to unveil the things that are hidden, accept mystery sometimes in anticipation for what it brings, and then we need to come prepared to receive what God has to offer. And for some reason, oh, no, I don't want to power off. No, I don't like these things, and I'm very sorry for that. As I close today, I want to read for you the scripture again. And I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version because I think it brings to light and closes off so perfectly well. He said to them, A lamp is not brought in to be put under a basket or under a bed, is it? Is it not brought in to be put on a lampstand? For nothing is hidden except to be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, but that it would come to light. That is, things are hidden only temporarily until the appropriate time comes for them to be known. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. Then he said to them, Pay attention to what you hear. By your own standard of measurement, that is to the extent that you study spiritual truth and apply godly wisdom, it will be measured to you. And you will be given an even greater ability to respond 
and more will be given to you besides. For whoever has a teachable heart, to him more understanding will be given. And whoever does not have a yearning for the truth, even what he has will be taken from him. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that when you came to earth, you brought lessons that live even today that are meaningful for us to understand even today. And Lord God, it is my heart's desire that you will help me to be attentive to your work, to your will, to your word. That you will compel me to come not with a Tupperware, but with a vat <laughs> to know you, to experience you, and to receive from you. Give me faith, Lord God, that you will indeed provide all that I need. And let me shine your light to the world before me so that your kingdom can come here on earth as it is in heaven. We pray. Amen. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Jesus Messiah. Jesus 
shine for you you give what you need us to give and uh, may we not hide it but uh, let it shine on for we know what the hope is it's in you in your precious and holy name amen we're gonna have the band come and share with us for our final song Come, let us all unite to sing, God is love, and indeed, he is love. Verse 2 begins with, O oh, tell to earth's remotest bound, God is love. In Christ we have redemption found god is love how happy is our portion here god is love he is our sun and shield by day our help our strength our stay he will be with us all the way god is love are those not comforting words and promises from the Lord this morning? Let's stand and sing together. Thank you. 
figurative light here. The first time Jesus gets up and uh, does something of ministry in the Gospel of Luke, he goes to his hometown and he preaches. How does that end for him? Not so well. A, they chase him and send him to the cliff, and B, he has to become a ninja and sneak through them. Um, pardon me? To get away, yeah, because Jesus is a ninja. That is a firm doctrine. No. Um, <laughs> but he gets up and he preaches what it is that the light reveals. Um, he reads from Isaiah 42. He gets down and he gets the scroll and he found the place where it is written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That is the year of Jubilee, the year when sins are forgiven. That is the message of the light. That is the message of the gospel. Go forth and shine that light to the world. Amen? Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.